first test of the high speed CPU that I was abating alkaline damage on and it boots to a zero on the display. It looks like an eight, but it is in fact a zero. And I have replaced uh, the reset section with a modern reset generator. And this is the minimum required configuration for uh, installing the reset generator. Replaced all these filter caps, these 0 .0001 filter caps and one of the chokes was corroded that was the inductor the copper coil so you can just put a jumper on there and that works just fine a, a few of these 4.7k pull-up resistor sips were damaged so i replaced those and now we've got a problem where q6 seems to be locked on i, I bent q6 off but if i if I lay one across there like that, it locks on. Um, so Q6, let's see, comes from U17, pins four and five, and to pin six. So U17, pin four and five, oh, no signal on five, so the signal on six is gonna be invalid. So there's no signal on five. The signal to pin five comes from U10 pin, pin 17. So 20, 19, 18, 17. And there is a high signal there. So we need to find out where the break in the circuit is from this pin down to U17. Be right back. I see this pretty often where these SIP pull-up resistors, and this one's a 2.2K pull-up resistor, and it goes here at SR16, and I've removed it, and I could see it beforehand that it had a crack between legs 5 and 6, and I also correlated that to the lamp matrix columns five, six, seven, and eight were always locked on. So that pull-up resistor wasn't doing its job. So I've got a new one for my friend Ed at Great Plains Electronics. And let's get that in there and see if that solves the problem. So we are back on the bench and you can see right here, it's really tough to see in the video, but I tack soldered a piece of fine wire across that trace. And usually I'm not in favor of tack soldering, and I, I may in fact add a longer jumper to this, but it's gotta go all the way from U17 here all the way up to U10. In fact, I'll do that just to be redundant. But we have um, replaced this 2.2K SIP resistor at SR16, so let's see if we have a working lamp matrix now. Boot it up, we have the zero, and yes, sir, Bob, we have a working lamp matrix. We still have a locked on solenoid 16. So let's see what's going on there. I'll put this in my high speed to test the music. You can see this is a rev two of dumbass's master super duper display panel. And it supports all games, all games system 9 through 11 and Data East correctly. <clears throat> you can see this is a high speed, so the um, credit ball and play displays are down there. And I've got what I love most is a front accessible control panel here. The next test is sound, but we'll skip that for now. A lamp test. We can go through individual lamps. Yay, lamp matrix working. Coil test. And I said, <clears throat> I said earlier that I had a coil locked on. That was a coin lockout coil. 
And technically it was locked on, but not really. It should come on right now. Now high speed is not multiplexed. So the typical thing that you see with a um, the AC select relay coming on, you won't see with this. The special solenoids were working correctly. And I do have to one, do one thing to this. The back of this board didn't have the 1M5228. I can't remember. It's a 6.8 volt zener that's used as a fuse. And I'll tack solder those across these six glass capacitors up here. So the solenoids are working properly. So I'm going to go to switch edges and go across. Oh, it's showing me in the lower right what switch is pressed. The diagonal part of the switch matrix. High speed only goes to switch 52. Let's see if I can figure out where 52 is. There's 52. And I want to be a guitar player. So that is working properly. See if I can put it on free play. That is a adjustment. Twenty three, if I have it written down correctly. There we go. Cycle through those, the board will reboot. Uh, probably say free play here in just a second. I love this new display panel that I got from Victor slash dumbass. It's in white characters and it's really sharp for doing this kind of work here. So let me get to tack soldering those Zener diodes onto the back of here and running that jumper just to be redundant and this board will be good to go. So I have added the Zener diodes as I pictured. I tack soldered them to the back of here and I did add that jumper uh, just in case my tack soldering fails. Let's boot it. Also, you heard that little tink. That's characteristic of high speed when it boots. And I fished my background soundboard out of my high speed instead of dragging the CPU over there. So you can see it's commanding the background sounds perfectly. Display test one more time. I'll skip that part. So that's all working properly. Just one more time, the lamp matrix is operating correctly. So yeah, this board set, or this board, this high speed, is brought back from the dead. And uh, it is good to go.